Good afternoon. Today I'm going to be reviewing the Satina DS Action Diver. This watch is available from Satina Authorised Dealers for €990. Euro. Satina sent me this review sample and therefore it doesn't come with the usual watch box, warranty card and owner's instruction manual. However, of course, if you purchase the watch from a Satina Authorised Dealer, it will come with a watch box, owner's manual and warranty card. So firstly, I'll give you the backgrounds to the DS Diver. Satina have been making the DS Diver since 1959 and the two core principles of DS, which stands for double security, is that the watch should be water resistant and also shock resistant. So from 1959 to the present day they have continued with the DS Diver series and this is the latest version, the Satina DS Action Diver. With regards to the dimensions we have a 43mm case diameter. We have a lug to lug measurement of 51.2 millimeters, a thickness of 13 millimeters, and a lug width of 21 millimeters. The bracelet tapers from 21 millimeters at the lugs down to 18.8 millimeters at the two button push clasp. And as you can see, the two button push clasp is signed to a high standard with Satina logo engraved. So as you can see, we have two button push triggers to release the clasp, solid milled 316L grade stainless steel interior, beautiful luster to the brass satin finishing, to the top side, underside and flanks, no sharp edges, no burrs. It's a very well finished solid mill clasp. There are also two other pushes which activate the ratcheting mechanism. Now this is one of the best ratcheting mechanisms I have seen. As you can see, it's incredibly thin. One can push it in and it clicks all the way in and pressing the two button push triggers releases the ratcheting mechanism. I'll show you the underside. So as you can see, very low profile, very well finished to the mechanism, and it works very well because there's no play in it, but it pushes in very easily. So this gives plenty of on-the-fly adjustment, and it releases very well. So this is outstanding, one of the best clasps I have seen. Now the other thing I really like about it is it's incredibly low profile and one can adjust it on wrist simply by pushing it in on the ratcheting mechanism and also on wrist one can press the two triggers and it opens up. So plenty of adjustment as you can see and incredibly low profile, it curves around the wrist very well. Beautiful luster to the two button push ratcheting clasp as you can see, absolutely gorgeous brass satin finishing. We've got a nice large mirror polished bevel to the edge of the flank and no sharp edges, no sharp corners and brass satin finish to a high standard on the flanks to the clasp. With regards to the rest of the specification we have a flat sapphire crystal with clear tinted AR coating and the clear, clear tinted AR coating does an outstanding job of reducing the glare and the highly reflective nature of the mirror polished hands and also the mirror polished indices. We have a glossy deep black enamel dial which is absolutely gorgeous. The dial has a really deep black colour to it and I really like it. So I think they've made the correct decision by using a black enamel dial versus a matte black dial. The hands are correctly proportioned. The minute hand, which is pencil style, extends all the way to the white minute ticks on the chapter ring. And we have a contrasting arrowhead uh, hand for the hour hand, which is also correctly proportioned. Good length to the second hand, which also extends fully to the minute ticks on the chapter ring. The white minute ticks contrast very well with the enamel black dial. Now, with regards to the text on the dial, I think it's over branded. And this is my one criticism of the dial layout. I like the Satina brand emblem and also 1888 at 12 o'clock, but looking closely at the 6 o'clock position, it says DS Action Powermatic 80 Divers Watch 300 meters. I think they should delete Divers Watch because this is clearly a dive watch. One doesn't need to state Divers Watch 300 meters. It would look cleaner if they simply had DS Action Powermatic 80 and 300 meters. I think it just needs the Divers Watch deleted. But however, this is subjective. Some collectors might like the text on the dial, but I think it looks too cluttered and too busy. The symmetry of the dial is very good. I like that the 12 o'clock index is larger, the triangle is larger than the 9 and 6 o'clock. It's got good symmetry because they've also added an index next to the date complication to give balance. The white state tool with black Arabic numerals is clearly legible, although I think it would look more aesthetically pleasing if it had a black date tool with white Arabic numerals as per the Amiga Planet Ocean. But I can understand why they've used the white date wheel because the white date wheel and index adds balance to the 9 o'clock index on the other side of the dial so the symmetry is good legibility is good and the clear AR coating does an excellent job with regards to the ceramic bezel insert it's got a nice glossy finish to the black ceramic 
It's fully inlaid with minute ticks, and the Arabic numerals are also inlaid to a high standard with white paint, as you can see. Good symmetry to it, and I like that the first 15 minutes, the first quarter, are indexed with larger minute ticks, and the rest of the minute ticks are just dots. So it's a very aesthetically pleasing curved profile to the ceramic bezel inset. One of my favourite aspects to the piece is the low profile coin edge bezel and Satina have made the correct decision by not using a gear tooth or alternatively a scalloped bezel. I like the low profile coin edge bezel which gives it a vintage aesthetic. It's got a nice large chamfer machine to the top edge which is mirror polished to a flawless standard and that does complement the coin edge bezel and also it means that the tips to the teeth on the coin edge bezel aren't sharp. They don't dig into one's index finger and thumb when gripping it so the coin edge bezel is grippy despite being low profile but the large chamfer which is mirror polished is very aesthetically pleasing the way it catches the light and also means it doesn't dig into the finger and thumb. So very well executed and also very good looking. With regards to the crown, it's solid 316 Earl grade stainless steel, no old finish, correctly proportioned, nice pointed crown guards. Now we've also got it signed with DS for double security and it is mirror polished on the dome's cap to a very high standard. So let's test the screw down crown execution. Absolutely silky smooth. This is sublime screw down crown execution. The screw down crown provides an effective hermetic seal to 300 meters of water resistance, which is very strong specification. This piece meets all the criteria of ISO 6425 specification, so it's thoroughly tested to ISO 6425. It is a credible 300 meter dive piece. So, in the first position, one can manually wind the caliber 80 Powermatic to its maximum 80 hour power reserve. So 80 hours of power reserve is very impressive. The caliber 80.611 is an absolute pleasure to manually wind. One can feel the tension in the mainspring gradually building up. Very smooth to manually wind. So putting it out to the first click position is the quick set date complication. If you look at the date window at, si at three o'clock, rotating it clockwise advances the quick set complication. Nice positive clicks. But as I've detailed, I think that the date complication would have looked more aesthetically pleasing if it were a black date wheel with white Arabic numerals versus a white date wheel with black Arabic numerals. But it does add symmetry to the dial and it does add balance between the 9 and 3 o'clock applied indices. Nice positive clicking action to it. It feels light, but there's no back play in it and it's an absolute pleasure to operate the quick set complication. Pulling it out to the second click position is the time setting position. And as you can see, looking at the second hand, I have now stopped it dead. So it's possible to set the time precisely to the second. The Powermatic 80 has hacking. Nice firm resistance to the Powermatic 80. And one can feel the friction in the gearing. It feels like a good solid movement. No back play clockwise and anti-clockwise. There's an immediate response when one rotates the crown clockwise and anti-clockwise. And I like the solid feeling of it. It feels very similar to an ETA 2824-2 because the Powermatic 80.611 is based upon the 2824-2. So although this has 23 joules versus the 25 joules of the 2824-2, it does feel very similar. The resistance in the gearing and the solid feeling of it does feel very similar to the 2824-2 and that's something I really like about it. Pushing it back in has a nice positive click and that restarts the movement. The second hand begins to sweep around the dial once again. So let's test screwing the crown back down. Immediate thread pickup. This is 10 out of 10 sublime screw down crown execution. Silky smooth. There's an immediate thread pickup between the internal thread of the stainless steel crown and the external thread of the stainless steel crown tube. This is one of the best screw down crown executions I have experienced. I would describe it as as good as a Rolex trip lock crown used on the Submariner date. That is the level of quality we're looking at with this DS Action Diver. So let's test the bezel execution. 120 click unidirectional bezel as one would expect. Nice firm resistance to it. In terms of resistance it feels very similar to a Steinhardt Ocean 139. That's the level of firmness. And it's firmer than a Seiko bezel action. And I really like it. It's definitely firmer than a Tudor Black Bay or Tudor Pelagos bezel action and firmer than a Rolex Mariner Date. So if you like nice firm bezel action, you'll definitely appreciate the solid 120 clicks. Nice loud audible clicks. It feels even all the way through the 360 degrees of rotation. No lateral side side play whatsoever. 
no back play whatsoever. This is a nice tight bezel action. I'm just going to check the alignments. I really like the loud audible clicks. It's got a nice tool watch aesthetic to it. They really do feel very solid. Each click has a nice positive index and I love the fact there's no back play whatsoever and no lateral side to play. Very tight bezel action, very firm clicks. Perfect. The Loom Pip and Triangle perfectly aligned with the 12 o'clock index on the dial and the 12 o'clock 60 minutes Arabic numerals on the chapter ring. So this is 10 out of 10 bezel execution, an example to other brands of how to get it correct. Nice firm resistance, nice loud audible clicks, no lateral side side play, no back play, perfect alignment, the perfect bezel action personified. Right, so I'll show you the case back. Solid 316L grade stainless steel screw down case back, which provides an effective hermetic seal to 300 meters. Again, the case back meets the specification of ISO 6425, a 300 meter water resistance. As you can see, it's engraved and embossed to a very high standard with a Satina emblem and also the specification and reference number of the piece. Flawless mirror polishing to the screw down case back. The milled slots are finished to perfection, no sharp edges, no burrs. And it is a low profile case back, bearing in mind this is a 300 meter water resistant piece. Usually with 300 meter pieces, one expects a thicker case back than on a 200 meter piece. But this is the kind of thinness to the case back and the flat profile one would expect on a 100 or 200 meter piece. It's very low profile, very smooth, very comfortable to wear against the wrist for long periods of time. The end links are a good tight fit to the case, finished to perfection, brush satin finished, beautiful luster to the end links, and that contrasts with the flawless mirror polishing to the underside of the case, no sharp edges to the underside of the flanks, and the undercut to the case has a nice curved profile. Now with regards to the flanks, vertical brush satin finishing, and I love the luster to the vertical brush satin finishing, it makes a refreshing change from using mirror polished flanks. The vertical brushing gives it a tool watch aesthetic rather than a dress watch look. And also we have brush satin finishing to the tops of the lugs. Nice, crisp, sharp edge to it. So the case finishing is absolute perfection. Looking at the crown guard side, we also have nice angular pointed crown guards which are correctly proportioned. And again, beautiful luster to the vertical brush satin finishing to the flanks. The case finishing on this watch is perfection personified. Right, so I'll give you a wrist shot and you can see how it fits on my 8 inch wrist. Now, I haven't sized the bracelet. It has all the links in the bracelet and I'm pleased to report it fits my 8 inch wrist with no difficulty whatsoever. I can in fact slip an index finger underneath the bracelet and clasp at all times. So this will actually fit up to an 8.5 inch wrist with no difficulty. Now, with the ratcheting divers extension, you can operate it on wrist simply by pressing the two button push triggers and that extends it and then you can close it up on wrist by pushing it in. It clicks in with a positive click on the ratcheting mechanism as you can see. So on full extension this will actually fit up to a 9 inch wrist but on minimum it will fit up to an 8.5 inch wrist and it works very well because the on the fly adjustment means one doesn't have to remove the watch to adjust it. One can actually press the two button triggers and it actually deploys as you can see. And on wrist, one can close it up to get the perfect fit with the ratcheting mechanism. Nice positive clicks to the ratcheting mechanism and it deploys fully very easily by pressing the two button push triggers as you can see. This is one of the best ratcheting mechanisms I have experienced on a watch. I actually prefer it to the Rolex Glide Lock which I consider to be the industry standard. That's one of the best micro adjustment systems and I actually consider it superior to the Tudor T-Fit which is very similar and also the Tudor Pelagos micro adjustment system. This is absolutely outstanding and Satina deserve full credit for it. It's one of the best ratcheting clasps. One can get the perfect fit without resizing the bracelet. And when one's wrist expands in warmer weather or when one is active, one simply presses the two button push triggers and it opens up the bracelet. Absolutely outstanding. So as you can see, it's a 43 millimeter head of the piece and therefore it does wear with wrist presence. Straight away I'm going to say, if you are a collector with a six to seven inch wrist, you'll find this to be too large. And therefore you may want to consider the smaller version of the DS Action Diver. They also offer it in 39 millimeters, but this is the 43 millimeter version. And as you can see, 
it does have significant wrist presence. It's a heavy piece with all the links in the bracelet, 203 grams. Now, as you'll know from my previous reviews, I consider the sweet spot for 40 and 41 millimeter what pieces on solid bracelets to be circa 150. 150 grams gives a nice feeling of wrist presence and also quality, but it's not uncomfortable to wear for long periods of time, such as eight to 12 hours per day. At 203 grams, this is significantly heavier than the sweet spot of 150. So that's something to consider. Now, if you have a larger wrist of seven to eight inches, you will enjoy the wrist presence and you will enjoy the feeling of heft because it does feel like a solid tool watch and it does feel quality. But I would say if you have a six to seven inch wrist, the 39 millimeter version will be a better choice. If you have a seven to eight inch wrist, you may like the 43 millimeters. The thing to note is it does have a relatively long lug to lug measurement of 51.2. Now, I consider 48 to be the perfect lug to lug measurement, regardless of whether you have a six to seven inch wrist or a seven to eight inch wrist respectively. At 51.2, it's slightly long, 3.2 millimeters longer than I would like. But as you can see, there is a nice curved undercut to the case. So unlike other large pieces, one doesn't get an abhorrent gap underneath the lugs. Now, I think this would be better if it had female pivoted end links because that would allow for better articulation on the end of the bracelet. There is a slight gap beneath the tips of the lugs and also the first link in the bracelet. Female pivoted end links would close this up. But however, despite it being 51.2, it actually wraps around the wrist very well, rather like a tonneau case. Very comfortable piece to wear. Now it's deceptive. One would expect a 203 gram piece that's 43 millimeters to wear top heavy, but Satina deserve credit because they have got the correct taper on this bracelet. 21 at the lugs is the correct lug width for a 43 millimeter head of the piece. 21 tapering down to 18.8. Now had they used 21 tapering to 16, the bracelet would have been too slender, but 21 to 18.8 means that it does have a nice slight gradual taper down to the two button push clasp, and the clasp is very well proportioned. It's just the right width to balance the head of the piece and also the bracelet. And also the two button push triggers for opening it aren't too large. And the second smaller two button push triggers for deploying the, dive at the extension ratcheting mechanism also aren't too large. So that, well, they're not going to accidentally deploy because one has to press both triggers and it closes up with a nice positive clicking ratcheting mechanism. So proportions of the bracelet are excellent. Proportions of the case are very good, although I think it would have been better with a 48 millimeter lug to lug. The 21 millimeter lug width is correct. The thing I like about it is it's deceptively low profile. This is only 13 millimeters thick. Now they've made the correct decision by using a flat sapphire crystal rather than using a double dome sapphire crystal. Had they used a double dome crystal, this would have increased the thickness to circa 14 millimeters, which would have been too tall. 13 means that it's easily going to slip underneath a shirt cuff if you wear business shirts. So as you can see, the AR coating does an outstanding job. And I really like the way the large mirror polished chamfer on the top edge of the coin edge bezel catches the light. Absolutely gorgeous piece. Very comfortable piece to wear, very well balanced. The proportions are excellent and I love the glossy black enamel dial. So comfortable, good looking piece, very well proportioned and also very well balanced despite the heft. 203 grams. Right, so let's do a loom test and we'll see how the loom performs when it's charged up to the absolute maximum. So as always, I'm going to use my 100 UV LED torch to charge it up to the absolute peak. Right, so that's now fully charged and as you can see, it has not disappointed. This clearly is top grade BGW9 Superloom Nova. Perfect color tone match between the blue Superloom Nova on the loom pip in the ceramic bezel insert, the applied indices and the hands. Now, I really like the proportions of the hands and also they've made the correct decision by using a pencil hand for the minute hand and a contrasting arrowhead hand for the hour hand. One can clearly differentiate between the hour and minute hand. Loom pip on the sweeping second hand, the legibility is good. The symmetry of the dial is good because they've even applied a small index next to the date complication. So I like the symmetry of the nine, six and three uh, triangles. And also the orientation is very good. One can tell where 12 o'clock is immediately because the 12 o'clock index is larger than the nine and six o'clock triangles on the dial. So limb performance is good, it's glowing brightly and it will continue to glow for a good length of time. So clearly five to six layers of BGW9 Superluminova. 
Right, so let's discuss the movement used because it's one of my favourite aspects of the piece. So this uses the Calibre Powermatic 80.611. So I'll give you the background to the Powermatic 80. The Powermatic 80 series of movements are based upon the ETA 2824-2. So the Powermatic 80 has been in use since 2012 and it's based upon the 284-2 although this one has 23 joules versus the 25 joules of the 284-2. So what ETA did was they modified the 284-2 to create the Powermatic 80. They reduced the beat rate and the frequency so the 2824-2 runs at 28,800 vibrations per hour and a frequency of 4 Hz. The Powermatic 80 has a lower beat rate and lower frequency. It runs at 21,600 vibrations per hour and 3 Hz. So why did ETA reduce the beat rate and the frequency of the 2824-2? Well, the 2824-2 has a 40-hour power reserve when it's fully wound, but by reducing the beat rate and the frequency to 21,600 vibrations per hour and 3 hertz, they doubled the power reserve from 40 hours to 80. So 80 hours of power reserve is very impressive. So it has 23 joules, hand winding and hacking, which use for complications, quick set date complication, which I've demonstrated. Now, my favourite aspect of the Powermatic 80.611 is that it uses a Nivacron balance spring. Nivacron is titanium based and the benefits of using a Nivacron balance spring is it is magnetic resistant and it's also temperature variation resistant so that means it's a very stable movement and it's not going to be affected by magnetism or also temperature. Now it's not the perfect movement what are the negatives to it? Well it has one main negative the Powermatic 80 doesn't have an Etochron regulator as per the 2824-2. So why is that a negative? Well, usually with automatic movements such as the 2824-2 with an Etochron regulator, it means that a watchmaker can regulate the movement using a time grapher in the conventional way. The Powermatic 80 movements are regulated by laser in the factory. Now the benefit of using laser regulation rather than using a time grapher with an Etochron regulator on the movement is the laser regulation is incredibly accurate. This one is running consistently at plus two seconds per day when fully wound to its maximum 80 hour power reserve. That is actually within COSC chronometer limits of minus four to plus six seconds per day. Plus two is outstanding accuracy, 80 hours is outstanding power reserve. But the negative is it's laser regulated. It doesn't have an Etochron regulator. So for example, when this movement's due for a service, it cannot be broken down by a watchmaker, the parts ultrasonically cleaned and then built back up with fresh lubricants and regulated using a time grapher using the Etochron regulator. It doesn't have one. So this movement needs to be returned to Satina and then Satina will break the movement down, ultrasonically clean the parts, build it back up with fresh lubricants and again laser regulate it in the factory. So it is incredibly accurate, the regulation is outstanding but Unfortunately, it's not something that a conventional watchmaker can do using a time grapher. That's something to bear in mind. It will need to be returned to Satina for service. But I think it's a good trade-off because 80 hours plus 2 seconds per day. It's a reliable, well-proven movement. It has been in use since 2012. No reliability issues whatsoever. The build quality, quality control, materials and accuracy are all outstanding. So I really like the Powermatic 80 series. The Calibre 80.61 used in this piece is one of my personal favourites. This is the 23 joule version. They also make a 25 joule version. This one is incredibly accurate and incredibly reliable. So no negatives to it. It's magnetic resistant, temperature resistant and accurate. So lastly I'll summarise the piece. What do I think of it overall? Well when I'm considering reviewing a watch on my channel, the watch for me to criteria. It should be both excellent quality and excellent value at the respective price points. So this is €990 Euro purchased from a Satina authorised dealer. Yes, I consider, it, I consider it to be excellent quality and yes, I consider it to be excellent value at €990. Euro. The build's quality, quality control, materials and specification are outstanding for €990. Euro. 80 hours of power reserve, plus 2 seconds per day accuracy. 
BGW9 Superluminova, AR coating, 300 meters, and it is 300 meters, which is certified to ISO 6425 specification. There are no negatives to this watch whatsoever. The finishing throughout is outstanding, and one of my favorite aspects is one of the best ratcheting class mechanisms I have ever seen on a watch. Just perfection personified. So I'm going to declare it a champagne watch for lemonade money. I think this is one of the greatest watches for under 1,000 euro. It cannot be beaten. So I hope you've enjoyed my review of the Satina DS Action Diver. Please feel free to post your own comments below the video. Thank you very much.